everyone. Well, we're back here again. I've got another uh, request video here. And uh, where is it? Oh, yeah. The uh, letting go of the emotional attachment to another person. So I believe we're going to call this soul-to-soul -soul connections, twin flames, it's releasing the emotional attachment. Actually, this is a, a rather interesting topic because I find what has happened lately, especially for myself, um, in a previous video where I explained the chakra situation going on, that more and more of us are becoming less and less emotionally attached to not only uh, our twin flame, but to everything else around us that's physical in that particular perspective. And one of the things that, um, in doing a lot of counseling and having done a lot of readings for people in the past that I'm aware of, is the emotional attachment issue is a very big one uh, with a lot of people. And not necessarily is this just pertain to twin flames, but to people in all other kinds of relationships. The, you know, the, the situation here with um, the emotional attachment is, I want to kind of present it this way. <clears throat> if any of you have had that twin flame connection or any other kind of connection and it's been very intense and you went into the euphoria, the bubble love, as I like to call it, and everything was wonderful, everything was beautiful, and it was just lovey-dovey, it was romantic, it was just, you know, hip-hip, hurrah, and all that kind of stuff for an extended period of time. And, you know, you were given a possible outcome of what can happen between two people in that bubble of euphoria state. However, you need to understand that this that you've experienced is a potential of what could happen. What you also need to understand is it's been given to you as a gift of what's potentially there for you. But is it going to happen automatically? Is it just going to manifest for you without any changes, without any growth, without doing anything in your life to make things better? And what happens is, is in a course, in a <clears throat> of course, in a period of time, what happens is you begin to come back down to reality. And what happens is this is where the issues and the stuff comes up. And the next thing you know, you're in a state of separation uh, with this person, be it your twin or whatever other label you want to use. And this is where the emotional body comes into play. And the emotional body, and I hope people can understand this, because usually when I've seen this happen with, with twins, is because it's the first time in their life that they've usually experienced anything remotely as intense as this, what happens is the emotional body, because it was so good, because it was so wonderful, because it was so intense, and the sex was so great, just, you know, possibility thinking here. What happens is the emotional body, and that's the little girl, the little boy inside of you, whatever the case may be, says, that was so great, that was so wonderful, I want it back, and I want it now. And if you don't give it to me now, I'm going to make your goddamn life so miserable, it won't even be funny in that perspective. That's exactly what it's doing. That's what it's saying. And then the pain begins. The perpetual thinking begins. And the harder you try to stop, the more painful it gets. And you go into states of depression. You can't eat. You can't sleep. This is all dictated to, believe it or not, and controlled by your emotional body and a part of yourself it is not, and you're not going to like this, is not mature. 
it's not evolved, it's not grown up. It is acting, it is acting like a five-year-old kid in a grocery store wanting a piece of candy and mom says no and the kid throws himself down on the ground and starts having a temper tantrum and banging his hands and arms and everything else on the floor. That's exactly what you're doing. Now you may not like it, what I'm saying, but that's what you're doing. So what has to happen? Because you want what you had in the beginning back. The very first thing that you have to do is to realize that you're going to have to grow up. You're going to have to understand that you have some issues, you have some problems, and you have some things that you need to take care of. And what happens is, while that other person that you've become so attached to emotionally is out of the picture, you're being presented with the opportunity, as painful as it is, to do the things to do the growth. And one of the things that I have noticed with a lot of people, and again, this is not going to sit well with some people, is if you are counseling a person who is in this mindset of this emotional pain body situation, for a period of time, doesn't matter what you say or what I say to the person, all they want to do is go back and talk about the pain. They just want to keep talking about how lousy they feel, how shitty they feel, how their bodies react and how miserable they are. It becomes like a perpetual motion in that perspective because you're totally dominated by the emotional body. This is where you have to understand how much potential you actually have. Okay? Now some people have said, well, what did he just say? How much potential you actually have. If you're in a situation where your pain body is acting in exactly the manner that I'm talking about, you have to realize how powerful you really are, how much energy you really have. The problem is it's being expressed by that baby part of you that never really grew up and it's all being expressed through your emotional body which is something that each and every one of us in varying degrees at some point in our life through this evolutionary spiritual process and that's what it just is it's a process even for a set of twin flames or even people who want to call themselves twin flames who really are just having a relationship All right. That's cool. Whatever you want to call yourself is good with me. But the emotional attachment is dictated to you as the issues that need to come up. Now, how do you deal with this stuff? First of all, you have to be willing to shut up and listen, and I mean listen, to someone who's telling you what you're doing, how you're doing it, and then what you can do to rectify the situation somewhat. The next thing you need to be aware of is the longer you allow this to go on, the more it becomes a habit. And people say, well, I can't get him out of my mind. I can't get her out of my mind. Yes, that's true. You can't because what you're doing is you're trying to stop thinking about the person and that's what the problem is. As long as you keep trying, the emotional body is saying, you try all you want, I'm just going to keep making you think more and more about it. And then what happens is your imagination steps into play and because you're so hooked in, now you start seeing things you think he's calling you or she's calling you or you're having dreams about them and he's coming to you in dream or you're going to him in dream and it just goes on and on and on. The emotional attachment is there. And nine times out of ten, whenever I see a person that's in this much pain, I also see a person that is a very emotional person irrespective of whether they're connected with their twin flame or not. In most areas of their life, they're very emotional most of the time and they do everything with a great deal of emotion. This is where all of that energy needs to be brought into balance. Now, one of the things that I suggest that a person can do, and I'm not going to give anything that's going to be complicated. There's no 
one size fits all or there's no magic bullet. There's no magic bullet for anyone in any given situation. It's a matter of once you understand and become aware of what you're doing, it is the next step to recognize the source of where it's coming from and understand what's taking place. The little boy, the little girl inside is having a temper tantrum. Then you have to decide to become a parent. Now, what I mean by a parent is to realize that you're dealing with a kicking and screaming little boy or little girl inside of you having a temper tantrum and you have to realize that you're not going to fix this overnight. You're going to have to change it by doing something. And the doing something is this. One of the things that I know about emotional people is they don't have a lot of focus and discipline. They can explode emotionally at the drop of a hat. The really good ones that are really have a lot of emotion within them. And what happens is you have to begin to express some focus and discipline with yourself. And this applies in regards to the emotional attachment. And how I'm going to address this with you is to say, take a look around at your surroundings, where you live, your possessions, your clothes, whatever else. And take a look and see how much of it you could all throw out right now. All right, just as a test, all right, I want you to do this. Go and take a look at some of the things right around you right now that you have gathered in with you. And you probably got some close personal stuff, whatever. And then I want you to pick up something that you really like for yourself. And I want you to throw it in the garbage. And watch what happens. You're going to come up with 15 or 20 excuses why not to do that. And you're going to get emotionally upset because I even said it. All right. What I'm saying to you is the twin flame connection that you're feeling all the emotional pain about really has nothing to do with the twin flame. What it has to do is to the emotional attachment you have to your lifestyle and your everyday life that is being brought out as an impediment because of the twin flame connection and you're seeing it as the twin flame connection when in fact it's not. I hope you understood what I just said. The emotional pain you're feeling has nothing to do with the twin flame. It has to do with you as a person being an emotionally addictive and habitual person in regards to your own personal and individual life. And how do I know this? One of the things that I have an advantage of is having 20 years of experience of counseling people in these unions, relationships, soulmates, twin souls, soul rays, whatever the hell you want to call yourself. All right. And I see this pattern all the time. And once you begin to recognize what's taking place, once you begin to feel it take place, because there's something else that has to happen, and it's this, is when you're like this in the emotional thing, the other aspect that I've found with uh, very emotional people is we tend to, as a general rule, be control freaks. We like everything to be in its place. We like everything to go our way in spite of what we may say. And we kind of like to be in control of situations as much as possible. So <clears throat> in lieu of that fact, I'm going to tell you how you can break the habit of control. And I'm going to recommend this. The next time you get up in the morning, the usual bodily functions is you have to go to the bathroom for a bowel movement. All right, that's a normal procedure. I'm going to recommend it because you're such a control person and you're emotionally explosive that you get a handle on your bowels and say, you're not doing it today. And see how you feel. And that particular part of your body will tell you very, very quickly how much you actually are in control of your life and everything else that goes on. Now, having used that as a reverse demonstration, let's go the other way. 
And let's now go back to the bubble love phase and the everything came together, all right? And everything seemed to fit and everything seemed to work. And it was wonderful, it was beautiful, it was whatever. Now I ask you a question, him or her. Could you, being the person you are right now, arrange that situation to happen perfectly with all of the synchronicities, all of the blending, merging, melding that took place between you and this other person, all right? And you were emotional, you were just on a high, everything connected, everything fit, the back and forth was there. Did you feel emotional during that time? No, you didn't feel emotional. What you were feeling was a state of euphoria. All right? So now do a comparison. The state of euphoria that you were feeling was in direct opposite presentation to the exact emotional body and energy expression that you're going through now. The only difference is one was being expressed from a soul-to-soul -soul connection or a very, very high vibrational heart center connection and the other is being manifest from the solar plexus. You see, here's what all the people up on YouTube are missing. They don't understand the friggin' mechanics of this, and I do. This is what is happening. When you realize that you are not in control of your twin flame union or twin flame relationship, whatever case may be, twin soul, twin soulmate, whatever, then you're going to understand the process that you are going through and know that you are being guided, know that it is being directed for the positive outcome for you, either with the person that you think or believe is your twin flame or with another person down the line. How long this is going to take because I have actually met people who have believed they're in a twin flame connection and have been in the pain body and can't emotionally detach from it for 10 to 15 years. And they're still whining and pining. All right? They're still doing it. And that's because it's a habit. They don't understand what's going on. They refuse to parent their little girl or their little boy inside even though the universe will continually draw to them continued experiences to do that. I have actually seen bona fide twin flames come together who go through all of these steps, part, and then go through additional people after that until they get it. It takes so long. The issue at hand is only a matter of understanding. Once you understand what I'm trying to say to you, there's no difference between the euphoric state and the emotional pain body. The only difference is how it's expressing. One through the higher, one through the lower. Same amount of energy. Let me put it to you this way. I can talk to anybody on the planet right now and as I get to know how emotional they are, because everybody has emotions and feelings, well, some of us don't anymore to a greater degree, but as I can hear and feel their emotion, I can pretty much tell you exactly what's going to happen when they connect with the one, the twin flame, the soulmate, or the intense connection, just how vibrationally high and what they're going to experience based on their emotional content, you see, because we're going through a process. But because you're doing it individually, you think you're the only one on the planet that is feeling what you're feeling. And it's a process. That's why I'm trying to get you to understand you're not alone. All right? You never have been. And that the whole of this process is being divinely guided by that higher aspect of yourself. And that higher aspect of yourself doesn't want you to be able to have to go through what you're going through, 
It's sheer stubbornness on the part of the individual that is doing so, and habitual in that particular situation. And the reason that I say habitual is with a little bit of research and some people that I have counseled, when I find someone who spends extended periods of time in the pain body or can't let go of the situation or the twin thing or whatever it was, with a little bit of research, I find out that there were other people in their family just like them. They got a brother or a sister, or they're either their mom or their dad, was exactly like that. They could get emotionally attached to anything and everything. All right. So what I'm saying to you is when you're going through this, why people... Okay, I, I know why. Why people don't try to see beyond themselves, their individual self. The way to release the emotional attachment, the way to release the emotional attachment is to finally get to the point where you're willing to look beyond it, where you're beginning to sense that there's more going on here than just you being in all of this difficulty, you being emotional. The emotional body, as I said in a video about five years ago, I think, is a vast reservoir of creative energy. But it's templated with belief systems, ideologies, and philosophies, and also a sense of lack of spiritual maturity that it has to process. It has to go through a process of growth. In other words, what I'm saying to you in the simplest of terms, is the little girl or the little boy inside is going to grow up and mature whether you like it or not. And if you don't do it in this particular go-round, you're going to get a crack at doing it again and keep coming back until you get it right. Now, there may be some people who don't like what I'm saying. That's fine. I'm not here to win a popularity contest. What I'm here to do is to give information that can give you some understanding what's going on in the emotional attachment. <clears throat> so as I said before, go through your place of residence, start picking out the things that you're all emotionally attached to, and throw, start throwing some of it in the garbage and watch how you react. Or get up in the morning, and if you want to see how emotionally attached you are, stop yourself from having a bowel movement to see how much you are in control of your life. There isn't anyone in this planet, on this planet, that has control of their life. They don't. All right? You have no control of your life at a conscious level. You are functioning from many different dimensions and realities of consciousness, and you are being influenced continually all of the time. When you are in that euphoric bubble, that state of mind and state of being, was probably the first time in your life you actually expressed freedom. To have that permanently, you now have to go through the process of eliminating all of the stuff that prevents you from becoming totally free. I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. Anyone can have that up here. Anyone. It's there for everyone. It is not dependent on the other person. It is dependent on you and you alone. The problem is from the emotional point of view, you're thinking it's depending on the other person called the twin flame. That you won't be able to have it unless he or she is in your life. No. Misconception. And that's a misconception that a great many people are painting upon YouTube who give twin flame information. That the hip hop and the hype all about the twin flame philosophy and the twin flame symphony and the twin flame this and the twin flame that creates yet more emotional attachment and more aspects of separation. I, I, I watched recently a couple of videos where people were talking about separation and when you're going to come back together and you know they're giving signs and stuff and all of this and everything else that's going to happen. It has nothing to do with signs and symptoms. It has to do with growing up 
and moving in to that particular vibration and allowing the emotional body to do what it needs to do. And that is to stop being the dominant aspect by doing that. The other suggestion that I can make is this, is one needs to tend to start focusing to their heart center chakra. Now, one also needs to tend to something else, which I'm going to give at the very end of this video, is this. The next time one of you, whichever one of you, is feeling the pain and the emotion, and you're in the pain body, this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Take both of your hands, put them over your stomach. I think you saw me do this in a meditation a little while ago. Put them over your stomach. And I just want you to pay attention to how you're breathing. Okay? And you're going to find out that your belly is popping out like a balloon. In and out, like a balloon. Do you know what you're doing? You're belly breathing. And the more you belly breathe, the more you're pumping up the emotional body and the solar plexus. Contrary to popular belief, the solar plexus is not the power source. It is not the power source. The heart center is the power source. So the next time you're in the pain body, and you're him, hoon, and hon, and you're in agony, and all that stuff, put your hands over your belly. Feel how you're breathing. Feel how you're breathing. Then, close your eyes. Then, breathe up into your chest. Leaving your hands on your belly, breathe up into your chest. Breathe out to your mouth slowly. Breathe up into your chest. Breathe out slowly. Do that for three or four minutes. Because you're focusing on your breathing, because you're focusing on the rhythm of your breath, what you're not doing is focusing on the pain that you're feeling. Try it again. Hands over your belly. Breathe up into the chest. Blow it out and release. And release. When you're focused on your breathing and you're paying attention to it, there's something you can't do. Think. You cannot think if you're focused on your breathing. So the hamster running around eating your brains out has to stop because you're not paying attention to it anymore. You're focused on your breathing. This is not rocket science for Pete's sake. All right. There's no complicated formula. There's no magic bullet. You don't need a guru. All right. All you need is someone to give you some tools. I'm giving you some tools. Use it. It's that simple. What happens when you begin to breathe up here? If you do that, just the breathing, for a week, five minutes, what you're going to do is you're going to change the rhythm of the energy that moves through your body. You're going to create a rhythm of breath that doesn't stop just below the diaphragm and expresses from the emotional solar plexus chakra. You're going to breathe up into the chest and you're going to energize and magnetize the heart center. When you're focused up here and you're focused on your breathing, you cannot think. And the problem with humanity is we spend too much time thinking. Thinking can be hazardous to your health. And if you are in emotional pain and difficulty because of a twin flame separation, because of a twin flame separation, you need to relearn how to think. 
because as we well know there are many people on this planet who think they think we actually know that actually 95 percent of the population would probably rather die than think and of the other five percent that are actually left who think they are thinking of that only two percent actually think so there's room for improvement in every one of us no matter what our situation in life what our station in life is whether we're way up on the scale or way down we all need to take a breath we all need to refocus our energy we need to breathe a little through the body some years back I had a death experience I went through all the signs and symptoms of someone who was dying the withdrawal shutting down of the body organs consciousness everything and at the moment when I actually left my body I went through three months of this transition the actual process of dying took five seconds or less one of the things that I noticed as I got out of body was that I was still breathing but I was not breathing air I was breathing energy through the body hands over the belly when you're emotional close your eyes breathe up into the chest exhale through your mouth breathe people breathe stop thinking and breathe what will happen is you will begin to get in touch as you elevate yourself higher in your energetic system up here into the heart when you can get yourself more focused and localized in the heart you then can connect with the one and someone's going to say my twin flame no diddle head with you you don't need your twin flame if you're in emotional pain what you need is help and help is right there just above you it's called you and how are you going to get to you if you spend all your time down here in the belly in your state of immaturity as a five-year-old laying on the floor kicking and screaming having a temper tantrum because your beloved twin flame is not with you how are you going to do that so what happens is you need to learn to breathe you need to learn to grow up you need to learn to elevate your consciousness you need to learn and understand that the emotional pain that you're feeling now is self-proclaimed and self-inflicted by you through habit where you want to go is here you're just as strong here in the belly as you are here it's where you are expressing it from that makes the difference so therefore this is where you have to come in contact with you think about what I said you want help? I can help you breathe exhale this is the goal this is where you are we can fix this. Have a great day, everyone.